So when cutting the beadboard, you can use a table saw like I have here, I bought it from my father-in-law, or you can just use a circular saw. It really doesn't make a big difference. Uh, this is just gonna ensure that I have a straighter line, but even if your line isn't completely straight, you're, again, you're gonna be covering up with trim, so don't be too afraid of it. If you screw it up, you know, these are cheap, so not a big deal. So what we're doing is putting this beadboard on. Uh, if you're using a nail gun, just be mindful that you only want to nail it along the edges that you're going to cover and trim. So I'm going to put some corner trim here and some uh, round trim along the bottom and top edges. And if you're using a nail gun, just realize that also you can turn it upside down to get along the bottom edge. If you're not using a nail gun, one thing you can do also is just put adhesive on the back. Uh, like liquid nails and then put it on there. But if you ever want to take it off though, it's also going to remove whatever it's attached to and can cause a bigger mess. All right, so we've been putting on the beadboard here, but when we come to the socket, luckily I came up right on a seam. So I was able to cut my board like this, which I didn't have this notch in here, I just had this panel here and then I just kind of held it up. But uh, once, you're, once you get this out, you can just slide it behind now, the trick is, please turn off the power when you do this. The trick is you have to get it behind the uh, behind the outlet right here. You gotta keep those feet on the outside because you want it to be firm. You gotta pull this out because otherwise when you put your cover on, the socket would be too deep. So you want it to look like that when it's done. So once you have it in place, you can then tighten it down. Oh, but first we need to glue it. Now, the reason I glue it is because I don't want to have to put tacks all over the place. I can put it along the bottom edge and the top edge, uh, but like in this area, I don't really want to tack it. I could, I could use wood putty and fill it in, um, but this stuff works just fine. And if I ever pull this off, I'm gonna want to pull that off anyways. So you just put about a quarter inch bead in here. Let me put a little more on the edges here. Looks like it's pushed in there pretty well. So I can start pushing it down here. And of course, to really hold it in place, I'm gonna use some nails. Some people would say this is overkill, but uh, that's all right. So while I'm pushing up right here, I can tack it in spot. Okay, so once this is all centered up like this, I'm gonna tighten this down. These little tabs right here are going to stop it from sinking in too far, but it's still going to hold it tight. That way when you're using your electrical outlet, it doesn't want to move when you plug things in and out. Give a nice tight feel. So just snug, it doesn't have to be super tight. And once I put my plate on, it's going to cover up all my mistakes right there. Here's where it gets tricky. Not only do I have a socket to work around where a seam won't butt up to it, but I also have this trim to work around here too. So um, I started writing it all out, but I didn't really like what I was coming up with. So instead I grabbed a piece of paper and I just put it inside there and went around the trim just like that. And that way, uh, if I know I cut it just inside this paper, I should be good. And I can actually feel where the socket is so I can make some marks on there as well. So originally I had this trim plan, kind of cover up the seam and all these nail marks right here. but. You can kind of see this edge right here, so I don't really like that. So instead I got some of this trim right here. And now that's gonna be a lot better so I don't have to uh, really paint that edge. I might have to get a paintbrush in there a little bit, but it's gonna cover up these little nail holes really nice and uh, it's just gonna give it a nice clean look. If you enjoyed this video or find it helpful, consider looking in the description. This video is actually part of a larger project where I transformed my kitchen for only $500.